Good morning, Wickford Christian Centre, and welcome to the live stream. Welcome to those who worship God also in other churches, and to people that don't really go to church but have found themselves here. You're very welcome. If you like singing praises to God, Suzanne and the worship team at Wickford have been posting songs each Sunday morning onto the Whitford Christian Centre Facebook page. So please have a look at them and join in the praises. The title of today's message is Love One Another, taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. But before we read some lines from there, let's pray and commit this time to God. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the person of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for sending him to die on the cross so that we might know you and have a relationship with you. Thank you for the sending of the Holy Spirit that helps us to love one another. Help us to take some encouragement from your word, Lord, and to bring us closer to the Lord Jesus. And it's in his name we pray, amen. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 13, and we'll read from verses 31 to 35. That's John chapter 13, reading from verse 31. When he, that's Judas, was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If gl God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. We'll end the reading there. So what's going on here? So first of all, the Lord Jesus is talking to his disciples. And have a look at verse 35. He says, by this, everyone or all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. That's interesting, isn't it? Now this shows two things. Number one, there are two groups of people the Lord is talking to. The disciples, ones that know him, and everyone else, all people, i.e. people that are not disciples. He's giving this command to his disciples, a new commandment. Love one another, he says, as I have loved you. Well, why was this a new commandment? Wasn't loving others part of the Old Testament? Well, actually, yes, it was. In uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, we read, Love your neighbour as yourself, for I am the Lord. There was an instruction to love others in the Old Testament. So how was it then new? Well, the answer is that the Lord Jesus gave this command to his disciples so they would be known by their love for each other. They were to be distinct from others. That's what made it new. Verse 35, by this loving one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The Old Testament command we, we read about was not the distinct thing that separated the people of God from the other nations, but it is in the New Testament in this uh, passage that we're reading here. Albert Barnes in his commentary says that Christians are not to be known by how we necessarily dress or by what profession we have or even how we pray, but by a deep, genuine and tender affection for one another. And in the early church, it was this very thing which distinguished the first Christian believers to the other nations and the surrounding pagans, they noticed it. They said, these Christians, they're different. They love one another. Is that true of you? How have you been getting on recently? Have you been loving one another? We need to love one another. 
There's been a lot of love and support we've shown to each other as a church, keeping in touch with each other, the odd text or phone call to people, prayers for the sick, or prayers for the frontline key workers in the congregation, like medical staff, nurses, supermarket workers, shop workers, care workers. What about at home? Are we loving each other there? We need to love one another. Well, what kind of love is it? Well, let's answer this question by stating what it is not. It is not a showy sort of love where you behave because you want to give a good impression to others, but really you're fake. It's not the sort of love that says, look out, look out, someone's coming. Let's act in a civil manner and when they're gone, we can be normal again. That's a fake love. This love that Jesus is talking about needs to be a genuine love for one another. It should be the real you. It's the love you show to the people you live with or work with. They're the ones that know you really well. It should be a natural love that flows from you being in relationship with God. It's a conscious decision that you make which considers the needs of others ahead of your own. The love that the Lord Jesus is talking about is a sacrificial love. It's a choice you make to benefit others ahead of yourself. Well, how is this possible? You have to be attached to the vine. The fruit that comes from the good vine is healthy, wholesome and well and produces good fruit. What is this vine? It's the vine of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You have to be attached to him. How is your prayer life? Are you spending time with the Lord? Are you grafted into that vine? Are you reading his word? If not, try and do these things and see if things improve. We have to be in the vine. So what kind of love is this? Let's answer this question by having a look in what was going on in the whole chapter of John 13. At the beginning of the chapter, the Lord Jesus washes the disciples' feet. The Son of God, who took on flesh, plays the role of a servant. Loving like the Lord Jesus means that you serve people like that. Loving one another means humbling ourselves and ministering to people. Loving one another is about considering each other's needs and meeting those needs in love. It's like a successful managing director of a FTSE 100 company, say earning a seven-figure salary, knowing what their rightful position is in the company. They're in charge. Then they go and knock on the cleaner's door and say, give me the mop, I'll do it for you. And the cleaner says, no, no, doing that is not for a person in your position, you're the managing director. And the managing director responds, I know, but I want to do it for you. Loving like the Lord Jesus is a choice. The Bible says that we are to do nothing out of selfishness or pride, but in humility we are to value others above ourselves, not looking to our own interests, but the interests of others. That's the example of what the Lord Jesus gave us. He set that in order for us to copy. If you read on in verses 21 onwards, you've got the betrayal. It was the Last Supper and the Lord knew that one of them, Judas Iscariot, would betray him. Now this wasn't some random person. Judas had spent time with the Lord. He'd been taught by him. He ate with him. He loved him. But after becoming disheartened, he would betray him. Imagine knowing that you were going to be betrayed by someone, not taking action against that person. If many of us knew what was going to happen, someone would betray us, we probably would take action. And that might involve doing bad things to that person. The Lord Jesus knew what would happen, but he loved anyway. Loving means knowing that someone harbours ill will towards you, but you pray for them. You take that situation to God and you leave that situation with him. We are to express our frustrations to God and bless those people anyway. See, some of us have been expressing our frustrations to the wrong person. And in doing so, you get more frustrated. No. We are to cast our care unto God because he cares for us. Then in verse 34 and 35, the Lord gives the new commandment. And then in verse 38, he tells Peter that he would deny that he even knew the Lord. 
And Peter says, I'll never do that, Lord, even if I had to die. I'll never deny you. But the Lord knew he would deny him, but he loved him anyway. Loving others as the Lord loves, knows that at some point people may let us down, but love them anyway. Forgive them, help them, build them back up. And that's the kind of love that the Lord Jesus showed Peter. And because of it, this man became a mighty apostle in the early church. Despite the denial of Peter, the Lord Jesus said to him, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not overcome it. In all these situations, we learn that the Lord Jesus made a choice to love. When the Lord was arrested in the Mount of Olives, Peter himself tried to defend the Lord and fight back. And the Lord says, no, do you not think that I can, I can call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? He could have destroyed them all, but he didn't. In the midst of all this, what was happening in John chapter 13, in his mind, the Lord knew that he was going to the cross. He was going to die for the sins of the world. That's the kind of love he showed. Loving like the Lord is a sacrificial love. For him, a person innocent of any wrongdoing or sin, it meant suffering a brutal death and taking the punishment that we sinners deserve so that those who believe in him, who put their faith in him, can be saved. So to love like Jesus, you can't do it by your own human strength. You need the Holy Spirit. People don't naturally love this love. To love like that, there must be a change of heart. You must be born again. It's a spiritual rebirth where the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. Only then can you love others the way that Christ loved. It starts by believing in faith that the Lord Jesus' death atoned for your sins. It's by believing in faith in his marvellous resurrection, which proved that your salvation is secure. The Apostle Paul tells us if the Lord Jesus had not been raised, preaching is useless and faith is in vain. But God's love for us involved not only the death of his son, but the glorious resurrection. Thank God for that. And then when Jesus ascended, he released the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to indwell all believers. And it's the Holy Spirit that brings to remembrance the words of the Lord Jesus. And he's the one that changes you from the inside. You cannot do this on your own. So how do we cultivate this intimacy? Pray, spend time with God, read his word, cultivate relationships with other Christian people. It'll be better when we can physically meet. But in the meantime, let's stay in contact with each other, stay in connection with believers. Loving others is so difficult. We're fallen human beings living in a fallen world. We inherited a selfish, prideful nature. We're looking after ourselves is more natural than loving others. That's why the Lord's new command was so different. But the love of the Lord Jesus is not selfish or self-serving. It puts the interests of others before ourselves. When you first become born again, through God's grace, he fills you with his love. He pours out his love upon you. You feel light and airy and different. The world looks wonderful and you just become more loving. Then as you progress in the Christian life, things level out and God expects us to move from milk to meat. There must be a process of maturity in the faith. This is where it is important to understand that loving others is a choice. You're not compelled to do it, but you have to choose to do it. And every day, God gives us opportunity to make that choice through the interactions of people that we come into contact. For most of us, this means the people living with us. And that's where the battle with the flesh comes in. We are to yield to the Holy Spirit and crucify the flesh. How do we do that? Communicate politely to others, particularly when they are annoying you or speaking rudely. Respond lovingly. We must represent the Lord Jesus Christ well. The kind of love God calls us to have for others is the same kind that he has for us. It's part of his nature. It's a sacrificial love. It's a love where he sent his innocent son to die for our sins. And that's the essence of the love we are to show one another. Love sacrificially. Forgive unconditionally. 
cast the sins and annoyances that are committed against you to the cross. The Apostle Paul says, I die daily. And that's what we need to do, particularly with the flesh, before the cross, as we seek to love one another as the Lord Jesus loved us. So what does all this mean? Well, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are justified in the sight of God through faith in the Lord's atoning sacrifice for you on the cross. That means your sins are forgiven immediately and you are declared righteous in the sight of God through the Son. Praise God for that. But also you become sanctified. Now that's not instantaneous, that's a process. Being sanctified means you're reserved for the purposes of God. You are separated unto God. The Lord Jesus says late, he says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. This includes the unbelievers, the ones not justified by faith in the Son of God. But believers in the Lord are set apart. Later on, the Lord Jesus says in John 17, for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. You are made more Christ-like each day as you are sanctified and God gives opportunity each day to love one another as Jesus loved. Your situation where you are now is a testing ground where you develop Christ-likeness. Sanctification, becoming more like the Lord Jesus is a process and it comes through practicing showing love to one another. Practice in the lockdown at home, practice at work, practice as you queue up for shopping, practice as you walk past people ignoring social distancing, Practice showing love as the Lord loved the disciples in your circumstances. God's love means he's patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's love gives people the opportunity to repent, to turn to him, to put their faith in Jesus, to forgive them of their sins. As we love one another, we should demonstrate mercy, love, and forgiveness. Sometimes people make mistakes, they mess up, sometimes the mess affects you. Let's be merciful and forgive them and ask God's help in how to forgive. Through the Lord Jesus we get another chance. So loving others means that at times we give them another chance. That's how to love like the Lord. Well, what if you're thinking, I don't really feel like loving anyone. I don't even feel like loving God. Well, that can be a common thing, but don't get discouraged. Remember that God loved us before we loved him. And he loves us even if we ignore him at times. That's not a reason to carry on ignoring him, but an encouragement to turn our focus to him again. If you haven't been very loving recently, this is not to put a guilt trip on you. It's more of a reminder to what the Lord Jesus calls us in how to love and to care for one another. Romans says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When you, like the Apostle Paul, come to the end of your own strength and you feel you can't go on, and you think, I can't love people like Jesus did. God's encouragement to the Apostle Paul is the same for you. He says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Whose weakness? Your weakness. So if you're feeling weak, praise God. God's grace will help you to love other people. Do we feel loving at all times? No. During those times, read God's word. Take encouragement from it. Read a few lines of the Bible. Pray to him. Speak to him. Let him know what's on your mind. Rely on God's grace to get you through key is in all this you must come to the cross if you haven't been very loving recently you're just not in the mood to deal with people or if you've lost your focus on the lord jesus to get back on track come to the cross kneel or sit down somewhere close your eyes and see the cross in front of you and speak to god acknowledge that that's the place where the lord jesus died to take away your sins Believe in faith that the Lord Jesus died for you personally. If you've done anything wrong, confess it to God and repent of it. Any bad feelings, harboring grudges, any bad thoughts towards anyone. 
all of it, give it to Jesus at the cross. Ask him to forgive you for not loving others as you should. Ask him to help you and believe in faith that the Lord Jesus' death on the cross paid for your sins, past, present and future. Believe that the Lord Jesus was buried and your sins were buried with him. Believe that he arose again from the dead and you are a new creature in him. Trust God, then pick up your Bible and read his word. Speak to him daily as you go about your business. The cross is where business is done in order for us to get back on track. Do you want to love like Jesus? Then come to the cross where the Saviour died for you. That's where we die to self and live for Christ. It happens at the cross. The place where Jesus died is called Calvary and that's where the cross was. The song by Jenny Evelyn Hussey says, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. We used to sing that song in the church. The chorus says, Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. If you want to love each other as Jesus loved you, you have to first come to Calvary. Come to the cross and get back, get back on track. And that's where his love is found. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, which atones for all of our sins, past, present and future. Father, we admit that we fail in loving you and loving one another. Help us, Father, to apologise where we need to make that apology. Create in us a, a new love for you, Lord, that's devoted to you, one of intimacy, knowing that you as a loving father forgives us for our sins and our failures and our wrongdoings. Cleanse us by your precious blood. We are clean in your sight and bring us into a closer walk with you so we can love one another. Bring us to the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, Wickford. Don't forget to uh, listen to the songs that the, uh, the worship team posted. And uh, have a good day.